Hey guys, it's Bailey from Making Up the Midwest, and today I'm going to do a chit chat getting ready with me style tutorial for the look that I was wearing in my recent unboxing video with the Ipsy Birch Box Total Beauty thing that I'll link in the bottom bar if you're interested. I had a few people ask if I had tutorials for that look, what products I use, things like that, and so I thought I would go ahead and do one of these videos because I personally enjoy watching the chit chat type of videos, and so I thought I'd give it a go. So let's just get started. I'm going to begin by securing my hair out of my face. To do that, I always use these clips that you might see in the background. This one is by bloom.com and these are what um, I guess people who do your hair, hairstylists, I always see them using these. Any clip will do, headband, whatever you gotta do, but that's for minor fun. On the face today I'm gonna be using Kat, Don Kat Von D's Locket Foundation. This is actually a sample I picked up from Sephora and I not really sure whether I, I, I like it, uh, that's the truth, is that I like it, but I'm not sure if I will it will get much use in the coming summer months because I do tend to like to wear lighter coverage products or foundation, namely, so I'm kind of, I don't know whether I want to get it or not, but I do like it, and a review will be coming soon because they give you so much product in these, it's like not even funny, so I it's easily enough to give you my thoughts and a full thorough review on. So that will be coming soon, but I'm um, not sure if I'm going to be purchasing the full full shebang because it is pretty full coverage. So you can see I tend to put this towards the center of my face and then put whatever is left towards the outer part. That's just because I find I want more coverage on my inner area and then less so it blends out more naturally on the outside. And then I go in with my IT Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe powder brush to blend all of that out. Um, something else I wanted to talk about with these sample sized items like this is I've had, surprisingly, a few people within the past few weeks get in touch with me about wanting to start blogs or wanting to start filming YouTube tutorials and asking, um, you know, how do you have the variety of products? How do you get free products? You know, do you contact companies? Things like that. Uh, and that's one of the biggest things that I have found helped me, especially in the early, like right when I started, is going to Sephora. They are more than happy to give you sample sizes of things like this. It can be foundation. I also have conceal concealer that you'll see me using later in this tutorial, but um, they'll do it for Makeup Forever, Aqua Colors, just tons of things like that. So if you're wanting to get into this and just really, or even just really experiment with makeup, but you don't want to buy the whole shebang, go to Sephora and ask for samples because they are more than happy to give it to you. I'm also going to put some lip balms, balms, one lip balm on my lips. This is the Estacaris that came in my birch box this month. And I'm putting that on because right before I filmed this, actually, I was doing lip swatches of the Burt's Bees lip glosses. I have a few of these that'll be up on the blog sometime soon. Um, but if my lips look dry, red, or irritated, it's because you know how it gets when you just keep on putting um, repeated lip colors on your lips. Even when sometimes I'll find in the morning when I'm can't decide what lip color I want to wear with a look, I'll do the same thing with two or three lip colors and just leads to dry chap lip build. So once I am finished with foundation, I'm going to move on to concealer. Like I said before, I have this sample here. This is the Kat Von D Tattoo Concealer. I know I like this a lot, and so with my Chic Week Sephora VIB thing, I actually went out and got it. So I have the full size here, but because the sample is so generous, I'm not going to open this just yet, but just so you know, I loved it so much I went out and bought it. I'm very convinced that it will come in handy regardless of the month or season or whatever. And so, like I said, they give you a ton here. And I find that um, I'm having to use less highlighter or brightener. You know, sometimes you'll see me go in with this salmon colored, I think it's called Brightener Illuminate or something from Maybelline, those Dream Lumi pens. Um, and I'm finding I'm having to use that less because this just covers, it, it truly does cancel out and cover any dark, dark circles and stuff like that. And I've heard people rave about this. Oh, hair in the mouth. Rave about this before, but hadn't tried it, and now I'm so glad I have. Now I'm going to take a Precision from Sigma, a P84 brush, and I'm going to go and blend out what my fingers haven't already. I do find that this concealer is thick enough to where I do feel the need to use a brush with it to really get it in uh, some of those finer lines in my under eye area, just because if I don't, it's thick enough to where it will look a little, not cakey, but cracked. You you will be able to see those fine lines more. So I just first warm it up and blend it in with my finger, and then I go in with a brush and really blend it out. Keeping the brows pretty simple today, and I'm just going to go in with my Billion Dollar Brow Duo using the highlight side just to define this under underside area here. 
I'm not really going to fill in my brows today, mostly just because I'm lazy, truth be told. So I'm going to do my typical highlight routine, blend that out, and then take a little spoolie and um, neaten them up. And I think part of the reason I haven't done one of these videos prior to now, despite really loving watching other people do them, is typically I'm always listening to something when I get ready. That's in part why I do tutorials with voiceovers is because if it's a getting ready with me in the morning, I'll have morning radio on and it's it's morning talk. It's nothing terribly intellectually stimulating. You know, there are other things I could be listening to, but it's morning talk. My personal favorite stations are um, Dave Ryan in Minneapolis because that's where I went to school, so that's what I would listen to in the morning. Or when I was living in D.C., I had a few internships and things out there, I would listen to Hot 99.5 or The Kane Show in the morning. And so it's absolute trash radio. Um, I, I won't pretend it's anything super intellectual, but it's just fun. The other thing I would listen to is, or are YouTube videos. I'll get caught up on all of the YouTube videos that people might have put up the night before, people abroad might have put up, things like that. It's just a fun time uh, to relax and get caught up on things like that, get inspired as I get ready. Um, this, oh, by the way, is the Sigma eyeshadow base in Provoke, which is just a matte or satin flesh tone that I'm placing all over the moving part of my lid and up kind of into my brow area, really more just into the crease because this is slightly deeper than my natural skin tone, so it looks a little unnatural right up here in the brow bone area, so I'm just bringing it a little bit above the crease. For the shadows, you might have seen this mirror pop up in the tutorial. This is the Lorac Glow Getter Palette, which I have review and close-ups and swatches on the blog. It's beautiful, by the way, one of my favorites as of late, and so that's what I use to create this look. And so now I'm going to zoom you in so you can get a better idea of what's going on. So first thing I'm using here is the shimmery, shimmery guy right here. And I'm placing that all over the moving part of my eyelid. It's a really pretty all over shimmery shadow. This, by the way, is a Bdellium 775, which I, it's not... Is it a duo fiber? It, I guess it might be a duo fiber, but I love how flat but still fluffy it is. It's great for packing on color, and yet it's still very nice and fluffy. Now I'm going into the shade, the satin shade, right beside the shimmery shade I just laid down, and I'm placing that in my arch. And then I'm going to go into this shade right here. It's not this matte camel, but the one just next to it, and I'm placing that on the outer half of my eyelid. Then in the crease, I'm going to go with that matte camel color that I just said I would skip over before, and a Bdellium 785, again, another brush that I've been loving a lot as of late, and I'm going to place just a little bit of that in my crease to give it a little bit of definition. Nothing super dramatic, because the focus of this look really is going to be all about the dramatic wing. Then I'm going into this plummy purple with kind of a gold tinge to it and a small domed brush, and I'm placing... Ooh, phone, placing that in my outer corner just to add a little bit more interest, I guess. Not so much depth because it's not super deep or dark, which is one of the few problems I found with this palette. There aren't very many though, but it is that this palette kind of lacks a deep matte black or a deep gray or something like that to really add some contrast. But regardless, I'm placing that in my outer corner and blending it in towards the center of my lid. Now for the real drama, my go-to liner as of late for wings, dramatic wings at least, have, has been this Victoria's Secret or VS Pro graphic liner pen, super narrow tip. The one thing, oh it's a felt tip by the way, it's not like a calligraphy pen, which I do love and that was in my Dolly Wink pen liner that I was obsessed with for ages, but that, all, th all good things have to come to an end and that has finally dried out, so I've moved on to this, which is a nice little felt tip liner and it's much easier to get a hold of than the Dolly Wink liner. Uh, the one thing about this, though, is that it isn't completely waterproof. It's kind of, it can tend to smudge on rainy days. I tend to have a watery eye, and that can sometimes smudge it a little bit. So uh, what I'm actually looking into trying that new Jessie's Girl, and that I think is a calligraphy tip liner thing, um, and it's relatively inexpensive. So I think I'm going to go ahead and give that a try once this dries out. So there's one eye drawn. Now the hardest part is matching them both up. 
I've had some people comment that, you know, they can never imagine being able to draw even a little not as dramatic wing and to everyone who feels that way you just have to practice when i first started making videos a year and a half ago i felt obligated to try and do a dramatic wing liner and i sucked at it just oh uh, now i can hide it better i'm not perfect i won't lie but uh it just you have to practice have to have to practice so never say you can't just practice all right, so there are two semi-even wings. Here's a tip though, if you want to learn how to draw wings, cut yourself some bangs. That way, when you royally screw them up and have somewhere to be, you just take your bangs down, cover them over one side of your face, and that's that. Easy fix, or apply false lashes like I'm about to do. So in that tutorial, I was wearing these Red Cherry Demi Wispy lashes, which I will now apply, but I won't show myself applying because, um, it, frankly, it just takes ages, and I'm not to the point where I can talk as I do it yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, cut the camera, and then come back. Now for the face, and I need to hurry up because my camera is running out of battery. For the face, I used a contour. For the face, I used the NYC Smooth Skin Bronzer in doo -doo 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 -doo, Sunny, which I have really been loving lately. This is one of those things that I got because, um, well, for actually the $20 makeup challenge, and it was a bronzer that I'd heard quite a few people rave about given its drugstore price, but I hadn't really used a ton of until very recently, and ever since using it, or ever since starting using it, I have just loved it. It is, it rivals many high-end bronzers or contour powders that I regularly used prior to using this, so I really like it. And that I'm just using my Sigma F25 and running that kind of in my contour area, but kind of also on, on my cheekbones as well, as well as up into the temples on either side. And then a little trick that I kind of uh, started using after I saw Camilla Coelho, I think is her last name, uh, here on YouTube, I'm, everyone will know, uh, is she does her chin. And I found that that kind of balances the top and bottom half of my face out along with here. Um, but I just never thought to do my chin. For blush, I use this Vitality Cheek Flush uh, stain in Radiant Rose by It Cosmetics. Again, just going back in with that same brush, although this is very fluffy, so if you use it for the same thing, make sure and tap it off because this is a very pigmented blush. And I just run that on the tops of my cheekbones towards the back of my cheeks, but I don't bring my blush beyond uh, much more beyond my outer corner of my eye. And then the last step for this look is using the NYX Butter Gloss. This is in the shade Cherry Pie. I have a few of these, or all the shades that I mentioned in that Ulta haul video. I have all those swatched on the blog that I'll link to in the info bar, but for this particular look I used Cherry Pie, and these just go on so easily. So that is it. Take your hair down, and that is it for this I guess my recent take on a somewhat pinup-y type look. I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to create this look as well as this kind of getting ready with me chit chat sort of style video. Let me know if you do in the comments or give this video a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in my next video. Bye!